Welcome to another episode of Rehab Now with consultant physiatrist Dr. Paula Dawson, our rehabilitation medical doctor. And I'm your host, Alicia Taylor. Hi, Doc. Hi, Alicia Taylor. How are you? I am doing well. Nice. Growing nicely. Yes, you are. (laughs) Yes, I am. Yes, you are, actually. Mm-hmm. Anywho, mm-hmm. remember to check out our social media pages on Instagram. It's Rehab Institute Caribbean, Dr. Paula Dawson, Alyssa Taylor Music. And on Facebook, it's Rehabilitation Institute of the Caribbean. Website, RehabCaribbean.com. Yes, ma'am. All right, so here we go. Now, this week, we're talking about... Hmm. Give me a second. Osgood Schlatter Syndrome. A.K.A. Growing Pains. Did I get the Osgood? Is it Osgood or Osgood? Osgood. Osgood Schlatter. All this time, I'm going to try to complicate my life. Osgood Schlatter Syndrome. And it's not, where is this from though, originally? Like the... Osgood Schlatter? Hmm. That kind of sound like, I don't know. It's so, it's so, no, man. Oshkut Schlatter. Oh, them people German? there. Yeah, them people there. Mm-hmm. That's horrible. Yeah, it does sound like German. Yeah, actually, yes. like Schindler. Yes, Schlatter Syndrome. Yes. Great. Also known as Growing Pains. Didn't we have a sitcom by the name of Growing Pains? We actually did. Yeah, I think so. Was Michael J. Fox in that? Was he? Hmm, I don't remember. I don't remember. But Oscar Slatter, it's not quite Growing Pains because you have... Okay. We'll talk about Growing... I mentioned Growing Pains as well. Oh, I thought it was the same thing. No. You get Oscar Slatter <laughs> as a part of growing, but it's not the only pain you get when you're growing. Can't believe you ever get pain when you grow. It's oh, like boy. you can't escape pain ever. No. All right. No. So okay. So just carry me through the. All right. The os. So the the, the listeners might be wondering why are we even talking about Oscar Slatter? So Oscar Slatter is knee pain, anterior knee pain, pain in the front of the knee. Go through all of that for said knee pain. I could have said knee pain. You could have, but you anterior knee pain. <laughs> so it's anterior knee pain in adolescence. Okay. Especially boys. Uh, primarily boys. No, no. Okay, okay. Um, uh, anterior knee pain. Anterior knee pain. In adolescent boys. In in adolescents, but primarily boys. Because girls can get it too, but it's far more common in boys. So if your boy is like seven? He will not get it. Okay. He will not get mm-hmm. it. So Oshkut Slato is anterior knee pain. And what is really going on when you have um, Oshkut Slato? So during... All right, so the anatomy of the body is such that the quadriceps muscle, mm-hmm. which starts at the hip, it goes down through the anterior thigh, it goes through the kneecap, and then it forms a tendon called the patella tendon. Now, that tendon inserts into the top part of the leg bone, which is the shin. <laughs> oh, your yeah, shin. The shin bone. My now, right I'm where that tendon bone. inserts into the shin, you can get inflammation. Okay. Now, the question is, why do you get the inflammation? That inflammation primarily occurs when there's excess tugging and pulling on the patella tendon, usually as a result of um, jumping or running. So it's usually more common in athletes. athletics, but mm. very good in athletes. Mm-hmm. Weekend Boys, sprinters. Weekend, Warriors, right, so sorry. Mm-hmm. Weekend war- Not so much weekend wars, but basketball. So... My, the reason we brought this topic is because my son, Michael, had a very serious case of Oscar Slato. Yeah, but I thought you said it's in adolescence. True, but but, but when the child is a little a little bit overweight, they can have it too. Oh. He can have it as well. And But he's almost adolescent, you know. He's in high school. <laughs> okay. Right? So you can have it anywhere between 12 from 10 to 16. That's adolescent. Not, they're not teenagers, you know. Ah. So you can have it in your adolescent years. So you can have it as early as 10 and as late as oh, 18. Yes. And, and, Michael, yeah, and Michael he's 11. Mm-hmm. Right. And so what happened here is he plays basketball and he had right at the t- at the front of the knee, he mm-hmm. started getting a swelling, a very mm-hmm. painful, tender and warm swelling mm-hmm. because he used to do a lot of jumping with basketball. And why does this happen? 
usually when they're going through growth spurts, Mm -hmm. when the bone is stretching Stretching. rapidly, Mm -hmm. the muscles are stretching rapidly as Mm -hmm. well, and so are the tendons. So anything tearing is anything tearing. I'm glad you asked that. Mm -hmm. Because with him, most of the time, you don't need to do an MRI, but his was so bad that he could barely walk. He could not walk and bend his knee. He used to have to walk with a straight leg. Oh, gosh. And so he ended up doing an MRI, and the MRI showed that just behind his kneecap, he had a lot of swelling. He had bone bruise. He had tendon injuries. Ooh. He had cartilage. Yeah, he had a lot of things going on behind his oh knee. God. But he had it serious because he loved basketball. And he used to, even when he has pain, he's still going. <laughs> so <Okay. laughs> inflammation in the anterior knee mm-hmm. at the point where the kneecap inserts mm-hmm. into the shin bone. Mm-hmm. So, and that's Osgood Schlatter. Got it. Now, this... Go ahead. Okay, so... So... Playing the basketball or playing the sport and whatever, is it is it because it's like an overuse? I love this girl. Yes, it is. Okay. It is an overuse, but at the same time, it's mm-hmm. because of, one, the, gr- the growth. Mm-hmm. So, the first thing that grows is your skeleton, is your bone. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. And as the bone grows the muscle will have to stretch and grow. With the bone. Right. And so if you notice, boys, especially when they go through growth spurts, they're very inflexible because the muscles are trying to catch up to the bone in terms Mm. of the stretching. Now, we mentioned earlier growing pains. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. this is a type of growing pain, but more seen in athletes because of the jumping. Because when you're doing a lot of jumping, you're using the quadriceps muscle. Mm -hmm. So once the quadriceps muscle, which is the quads, the four muscles in the front, um... When, when it's pulling through the kneecap, it tug, it's tugging on the insertion. Now, this is different from the other growing pains that you get. And what are growing pains? Anywhere you have a growth plate in your body, and it's actually called the growth, growth plate. I didn't know it was a thing. I did not know it was a thing. Yes. I, I always hear them say, yes, I'm going to go through a growth spurn, right. yada, yada, yada. But so there are actually plates. plates. In the, there are actually plates. They're like an interface between... In the muscle where you actually have bone that is growing. So around the lower limb, it will be the end of the thigh bone Mm -hmm. and the proximal part, which is the near part of the shin bone. Mm -hmm. That's where you have your growths, Mm -hmm. the growth plates. And in the upper limb, it's the opposite. In your arm, the growth area is closer to the wrist (laughs) and closer to the shoulder. So (laughs) down in the the legs, it's by the knee and the upper limb is more shoulder and wrist. And what happens... Is you, you, that is where you have most of the multiplication of the, the bone cells forming more bone mm-hmm. to lengthen the mm-hmm. bone. And so when you have growth, um, growing pains, Sorry, you know, kids will be in bed at night and they're crying for knee pain, severe knee pain, because, you know, because of all the movement and the stretching, you know, it can be, it mm-hmm. can be the tendon that is stretching, mm-hmm. it can be the muscles that are stretching. Mm-hmm. And it can get damaged and because of the... Growth spur? Well, it doesn't necessarily get damaged mm-hmm. because of the growth spur, but you can get growth plate fractures. And that's mm-hmm. an important thing. And orthopedic surgeon will tell you that you don't want to interrupt your growth plates because if you do, and we call it a growth plate because it's it's kind of horizontal. It goes, out, out, not necessarily horizontal, it goes right across, traverses the bone. And so you have growth through that plate. So you don't want to interfere with your growth plates. Right, because it will arrest growth. By intervening. As in, if you intervene because you're having pain, Mm -hmm. that is, yeah, mess with your growth plate. So you should just stay there with the pain. No, what I mean, intervene, meaning, uh, let me be a bit clearer. So when you are playing a lot of sport, and say, so for example, you get traumatic injury mm-hmm. to the plate. Mm-hmm. So the, the Oshkosh clatter is not at the growth plate. You know? mm-hmm. Oshkosh mm-hmm. clatter is on the outside of the bone. Okay. This is with the, with the inside of the bone. So sometimes you can have a fracture where there's like a shift in the growth plate. What that happens is it can interrupt one side of the growth plate to grow oh. less than the other. Or one leg oh, that's may why some not people grow. Have, oh, that's why some people right. have... So, so if you names. interrupt the growth on one side, the other side will continue to grow. And then that one will be... Shot. And that one won't grow as much. 
So it's important for you to preserve the growth blade. So that is so growing pains can be as a result of just the, the bone um, mm-hmm. stretching, the mm-hmm. muscles are stretching to mm-hmm. try and catch up and they're now the stiff and they're now mm-hmm. tight. And then the tendons are, and the ligaments as well. So the ligaments mm-hmm. are now going through a whole rapid <laughs> modification. And the poor little babies at night still have pain when they walk. It's kind of achy, achy. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. We'll come to treatment for that kind of growing pains. But Oshkut Slatter, coming back to Oshkut okay. Slatter. Now, so we more commonly see them in jumpers. Okay. So any sports that you do a lot of jumping. Pulling. Yeah, pull the... Yeah, okay. pulling. So okay. basketball players, mm-hmm. runners, mm-hmm. high jumpers. Oh, yes. I know them. Pulling. These are... <laughs> right. So a symptom that they also have is that they will... Or it's really a sign. They can have severe swelling at the front of the knee. Mm-hmm. Like the swelling is so big that it can be puffy, that amount of inflammation. My son had a lot of we call effusion, a fluid in his knee because not only did he have the Oshkut slatter, he also had injury to the, the kneecap knees. right okay. under the kneecap. So his kneecap was continually rubbing mm-hmm. and, you know, because he's growing, the muscles are getting tight. But you don't always have to have injury beneath the kneecap, no. No, you, no. Can, just be ha- you can just have the swelling. You can just have the swelling mm-hmm. and the pain mm-hmm. right by the insertion mm-hmm. of the knee, the, mm-hmm. the patella tendon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And so it's very common. So one of the things we try to do is education. We try to educate these little boys. Okay, okay. And the coaches and the coaches know it quite well that once, once you're going through a growth spurt and you're playing a sport, especially if it's a jumping sport, you need to ensure that they're stretching. You need to ensure that there's adequate stretching because if you don't stretch, then you're going to have more tension on the tendon, when you have more tension on the tendon, you have more pull on the insertion and then you get more inflammation. You ever s- okay. You ever see, of course you've seen it, you're a doctor. Some of the times I've seen people playing sport and they, they wrap something around their knees. Those kind of, I don't know, basketball or swivel, but they wrap something around their knees. What does what does that help with? All right, don't help with anything. It helps. It helps because that is where we get to treatment. That is something that we use mm. to help to manage mm. and treat Oshkut Slatter and other patella tendon issues. Mm-hmm. And so patella tendon is the kneecap. We call that the patella. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the kneecap mm-hmm. has a specific groove in the thigh bone that it's supposed to glide through, mm-hmm. right? That's that between the, the, the distal, the far part mm-hmm. of the, fem, the femoral, femoral condyles. And <laughs> so what happens is the quadriceps muscles will stabilize the kneecap in those grooves. So remember, I tell you, you, Alicia, you used to have patella femoral syndrome, which did not need business. Everything. <laughs> Me, I have everything, you know. So the kneecap can track off. Instead of tracking in a groove, it can track oh. off. And when it tracks oh, off, beautiful. you can get pain. You can get pain when you're going upstairs, when you're coming downstairs yeah, especially. Man. And also, when you sit for long, you find that after a while, you just feel a fullness in the front of your knee and you have to extend the knee. Yes, that is me. And that, that is, is because me. your kneecap is not going through the groove properly. So it's resting on the condyle mm. out of the... The patella group. My God. Yes, ma'am. All right. So, okay. Thank you very much, Doc. But we're going to have to take a break. When we mm-hmm. come back, I believe we're going to have to go right into treatment. Yes, of ma'am. the Oshkut Schlatter Syndrome. Stay with us. Anterior knee pain. Right. Anterior knee pain. Welcome back to Rehab. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about Oshkut Schlatter Syndrome. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I, had to, I have to say it like that. It's actually Oshkut Schlatter Syndrome, and it's anterior... So? Yes, anterior. Anterior knee pain. Yes. I got it. Anterior knee pain that usually occurs in, in adolescents, and, and usually males. Usually males that are doing jumping sports. Yeah, man. That kind of activity. What Doc said. And especially when they're going through... Growth spurs. <laughs> Wait, right. is it spurs or it's spurt? It's a spurt. <laughs> you were oh, saying spurs? I say spurt all days of my life. Spurt. <laughs> growth spurts. Good, good spurt. Growth spurts. It's yes, a stop. spurt of growth. <laughs> stop. And we, I think we're right up on treatment. But before we get to treatment, yes, can we talk a little bit about the um the paletta? 
Patella. Cheesum. Patella femoral. Heard it as soon as I said it. Okay. So it's patella? Yes. Kneecap. Femoral, which is the thigh bone syndrome. And so we've had an episode Part on that before. Knee. Right. And so a lot of times it's not uncommon for you to see a, a, a patient with Osgood Slatter and Patella Femoral Syndrome. What is Patella? Wait, at the same time? At the same time. Well, it's just... Which is, which is maltracking. Double whammy. <clears throat> it is. So it's just maltracking, so the kneecap not going through the, the groove that it's supposed to go through. Mm -hmm. And again, why does this happen? The well, shift. the tight quads. So because the skeletal, the, the thigh bone is growing, and the quads trying to catch up, it becomes tight. When there's a tightness, you can get an imbalance in the quadriceps muscles. Now, guys, remember, quadriceps muscles mean four muscles, right? Mm -hmm. So there are four muscles in the anterior thigh that will will form a tendon, which is a quadriceps tendon, and it goes through the kneecap, and then that will turn to the patella tendon that will insert or connect to the leg, the shin, right? And so with patella, when it tracks off, you get a lot of rubbing at the back of the kneecap, and you get a lot of swelling and effusion, and it's very, very painful. Okay. Tell me something. I wonder if I got off track. No, we know. I'm wondering if genetics has, like, a role in... Interestingly, you say that, you know, because Oshwood Slato is... It, usually, if you have someone who's really tall... Like my dad. For a short time, they go through a growth spurt... No, no, no. ...over a short period of time. Sorry, you, if the person is tall for no, a short me, period of time? Right, so if they're... I should say it in a different way. Mm -hmm. If they are at a particular height... And they grow through a rapid growth oh, spurt. And then they end like, up being shoot very up. tall. They just spurt up. Then am I a family that man? Right. Yeah. So, so they can have that. However, coming back to the genetics, yeah. some families will have um, what we call knock knee. Knock knee can run in the family or more. Yeah, me, yeah mine. Knock right. knee running in mine. Right. So knock knee, it is genuine valgus. That's yes. the word for genuine valgus. And so with the knock knee, when the knee is not nice and straightly uh, straight aligned, <laughs> <laughs> you just said not nice, though. I, yes, I know. Yes. I, I heard it, and I should have taken it back. So, so everybody, so you're you're beautifully and wonderfully made. Yeah, all right. And if, so, if, except oh, if you have knock knee. However, apparently. however, with knock knee, what happens is the yeah. biomechanics. So, when you're contracting the quadriceps muscle, especially if you're running, the kneecap can track off. It's almost like it bow strings off. And it rubs the back of the knee. Oh, is that's the word you wanted to use for not knee? Bow strings off. Why? <laughs> you know what? That's an interesting because bow <laughs> leg is the opposite of that. I know. But it's almost all right. Let me explain to you why I say that. Say I have a, a stick, like a bow and arrow. You're making a bow and arrow, right? Yeah. And the bow is the same length as the string on the bow and arrow. Mm -hmm. That's perfectly straight. Mm -hmm. Once you start tightening the mm -hmm. string, the bow bows, and so they're no longer in alignment, which okay. is what happens to the knee. Okay. So, <laughs> so they're no longer in alignment, and when they're offline, you get the inflammation in the back. Mm. So the question is, I don't know, what, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Welcome to treatment. What do you do, Doc? Tell me. You know, so, so there's an ag Lord, Sorry. You couldn't... You just not give me a chance. Right. I was going to step with the algorithm thing and All then... All right. All right. So, of course, there's an algorithm. But if there's inflammation, what are you going to do? Is it price or rice? It is actually price. <laughs> <laughs> don't... Don't tell me if it's price. Give me one minute. What is the P? J Doc, you Sorry. need to ask you for a minute. Jesus. It's coming like an exam. We just don't pay me. What the P stand for? Don't tell me. Pre it's not pressure. Mm -mm. No, man. Uh, yeah. Tell me the R. What's the R for? R well, the R is is rest. Very good. And so the I is... Okay, sorry. I can do your thing. All right. So P is protect. Man, I forget that. Yes, so protect. So you want to protect the arrow. So, for example, with my son, when he had it, we went to the orthopedic surgeon. I did protect. take him to the doctor because at first I didn't believe. Michael, I love you very much. I was like, no, man, you're tough. Go, go run again. And we took him to the ortho guy. I was like, guys, no, no, this guy has a serious injury. So he actually <laughs> shut him down. Michael. He actually told him not to play basketball. And Michael was supposed to wear a brace, although his mother never really put him in the brace. Doctor saw <laughs> Well, you never really put him in the brace, but really we just, yeah, because I rehab, because I know how to fix it, so okay. I never really put him in the brace. Okay. But I told him how to walk and to preserve and not to tug on the 
patella. So we protected it, right? The next thing we did, he rested. He really rested. He didn't play basketball for six weeks. So rest is important. Why? Because it prevents the inflammation from recurring over and over and over again. Okay, so he, he never played basketball. Yes. But that means that he never walk up and down, he never do any kind of... He didn't run, but what he did when he walked, he would keep his knees straight. So, in fact, he couldn't even lift his leg off the bed because his quadriceps, once he would recruit the quads, it would pull on the tendon and he would have pain. So, he couldn't even lift his leg off the bed. That's how serious his Oshgood slatter was, mm-hmm. right? And so, he would walk, he would walk up the stairs with one leg, he would walk down the stairs with what? one leg. It was really bad. Man. But now he's playing basketball again. So what we did, we did a lot of ice. Ice is one of the best anti-inflammatory. That's the eye in price. That's the eye in price. So we ice it. Now, guys, remember, if you have no contraindication, you can ice. And how do you ice? Get a bag, a Ziploc or something. Mm-hmm. Put some ice in it if you don't have an ice pack. But yeah, always like wrap it. You always wrap it with a towel. Why? Because you can freeze a burn. You can burn your skin. In fact, the other day when I was running at my son's sports day and I pulled my hamstring, I iced the wood diesel out of my hamstring. And when You're I was such an extremist. No, but when I went to the therapist, <laughs> I had a burn mark, like a frostbite right down the back of my leg, a brown mark. Cause I, 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 Isn't I, I, this what you teach? <laughs> oh, did I say that? On <laughs> yes, you did. Okay, so guys, don't follow what I do because I can, you know. Do what I say. All right, come to me and I'll help you. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> but you have to make sure there is a layer to protect your skin between mm-hmm. that and the, mm-hmm. the ice. The, especially if you're using a plastic bag. But if you have an ice pack, a proper, proper ice pack, mm-hmm. then those are usually insulated with nice fabric that will not cause ice f- uh, skin burn or freezer burn. The next thing you do, you want to compress. For him, he mm-hmm. had to use uh, a knee sleeve. Uh, a neoprene knee sleeve, right? And so that's what is what are what is that? It's kind of like the rubber uh, knee brace that you see that people will pull up. Uh, after a while, when the compression got better, we started to wrap it with an ace bandage. So we do the figure eight ace bandage to kind of quiet the sw- to kind of bring the swelling down mm-hmm. because the body is so amazing. Even if you have a big swollen effusion, providing it's not infection, you apply. The compression, you remove the aggravation, which would be whatever activity, the body will absorb the, the fluid in the knee. The it knee, will. It will. It certainly Because I was, I was wondering, is it, I was saying to myself, this is like an external approach. What about what's going on internally? How is it going to help internally? But you, then you just... Yeah, man, yeah. the body absorbs it. Now, interestingly, when the effusion is so much, mm-hmm. which is the fluid in the, mm-hmm. the joint, when it is so much, it can be so severely painful. I've had patients where I actually have had to go in and you know them said take the water off of the knee. Yes. We had to t- I tell had to me. I had to tell me we'll aspirate. We just put a regular tiny needle and just go in and just take off the You fish. know you have patients patients. You know you have people who do that themselves. No. No they do. No. Like if they were talk with your table. How them do that? What do you mean on them do it? Pay people take the knee, the water out of them knee. Them, them taking the water out of, I've seen people take the water out of them knee. How them do that? Will you ask me, sir? Them took a needle in them foot? Yes. <gasps> and they pull up. Oh, no. You see, you don't want to do that, guys. Why? Because, one, mm-hmm. it has to be done on a sterile technique. That's mm-hmm. one. Two, there are some important structures around the knee. You want to be careful that you don't damage. Exactly. You have the kneecap, the, the, the meniscus. The, you have the medial and lateral meniscus. So those are the cushions between the thigh bone and the and the shin bone. Yeah, you don't, don't want to damage those. We don't those. know. We don't know where those things are. You have ligaments, the cruciate ligaments in the middle that you can juke or injury if you're pushing something. Yeah. And, oh, and you have the ligaments at the side, the medial and lateral collateral ligament. But then also the technique because you might seed bacteria in your knee and get a septic arthritis which is sepsis with pus and all of those things in the knee. So something like that has to be done on a sterile condition. If you're, gonna, if you're going to do aspiration of the knee, it has to be done with a, a doctor who is trained in doing safe aspiration. So you really shouldn't be taking fluid off your knee. But, or any part of your body. Or any part of your body. But just to go back to aspiration. So mm-hmm. I've had patients where the knee is so swollen, it's almost like... It's so tight. You ever eat you ever eat a, a good food and your belly full until it hurt you? Yeah man. Something like that. Sad That's to how say. that is sad to say. That's how bad sometimes the knee pain can be because you're stretching 
the structures in the knee. Feel like it's a burst. Feel like it's bursting. And yeah. usually when I take off, sometimes I take off as much as 30 mils and it's nice and straw colored. So that means it's nice and clean. Okay. And there's no infection. Okay. And once you take that pressure off, they love it because <gasps> you mm. get a sudden relief, mm. right? So we, we do that for the knee effusion if they have a knee effusion. But mm. the best way to do it, to, to bring swelling down is just to come off the legs, rest it, apply compression and elevate it and allow the body mm -hmm. to remove it. Mm -hmm. Then after that, of course, there's anti-inflammatory medication. Damn you must enough. give some ibuprofen, diclofenac. Pain. That's painkillers or just to, to bring down the swelling? To bring down the swelling. Mm -hmm. But the painkillers will also help the pain. The same painkillers. Mm -hmm. Ibuprofen, anti-inflammatory medication, they're non-steroidal, anti-inflammatory. They will quiet the inflammation, one, but they're also analgesic. They have analgesic properties as well. Analgesic mean help the pain. Okay. Like acetaminophen or cetamol or mm -hmm. panadol, those, mm -hmm. are, those are pure analgesic. But the other ones will give you analgesic, pain relief, as well as anti-inflammatory, mm -hmm. quiet the swelling. Of course, you know, the rehabilitation is important thereafter, where you have to kind of strengthen, stretch out back the quadriceps muscles as they're growing, mm -hmm. strengthen the quadriceps muscles as they're growing, just to bring them back to a proper alignment so that they'll be able to do the jumping without further injury. Good. Is there ever a case mm -hmm. where it's so severe, it's mm -hmm. so bad mm -hmm. that they will need surgery? Good question. Very good question. You know why? Because sometimes you can have avulsion where you can actually pull off a piece of the bone where the tendon inserts in the Jesus. shin bone. Huh? Yes, so you can have a little avulsion there. And so, of course, the orthopedic surgeon, you have to go to an orthopedic mm -hmm. surgeon for them to assess mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. to determine if they have to go in and do whatever surgical procedure. I don't want to tell you that I'm going to staple it, because you staple or whatever they do, or <laughs> suture it back on. But, you know, orthopedic so surgeons are the ones who are skilled at doing any surgical correction yes. if you have any avulsion, which mm -hmm. is where the tendon is pulled out of the bony insertion. Whew. It's not that bad. It's terrible. It usually doesn't get to that, though. Yeah, but Because the pain that precedes the avulsion, you tend to stop the activity before you get before, to that. Yeah, yeah, so yes. you don't want, you want your damages. Unless you're like one of them people they were addicted to. Or you have a parent that push you. <laughs> yeah. As they run. I just want like a swelling run. No, yes. don't do that to, no, your don't kids. Do that to your kids. Yeah. Okay, so well, that's it. That's all we got time for. Thank you, listeners. Thank you to Power 106, our producers, our engineers. Thank you, guys. And to our sponsors, the Rehabilitation Institute of the Caribbean, providing medical care for function and performance in association with Winchester MRI, Jamaica's first choice for MR imaging. Denk Pharma, a combination of key active ingredients designed to boost the body's natural defense and Almighty Studios, a recording studio where we create worship music to praise, to worship, and to serve. We will see you all next week, same time, same place. Blessings. <laughs> Almighty Studios, a place to record and rehearse in first-class style, a place you will want to have your work showcased. Welcome to Almighty Studios, a place for you. At Almighty Studios, we're here to praise, to worship, and to serve, exalting the King of Kings in worship music, where vocalists, musicians, and producers are inspired. Our engineers have over 20 years of collective experience in the music industry and are skilled in the art of mixing and mastering. Contact us by calling or sending us a WhatsApp at 876-770-6282 or email us at admin at almightystudios.com Follow us on Instagram, Almighty Studios.